I've seen some YouTubers go a little bit overboard with their RGB lighting. You need to have it nice and subtle. I do really like background RGB lighting. It helps take a boring plain scene like this and turn it into a scene like this, which I think looks a little more interesting. How did that transition go? Did that work? Probably not, but anyway. So what we've got today is six budget RGB lights that I'm going to compare against the one not so budget aperture, which is kind of the industry leading uh, little mini RGB light you can buy. Now they are not cheap and probably for good reason, but I'm gonna compare that against the six budget ones you can get and give my recommendation about what I think is the best uh, bang for buck in terms of RGB lighting. So let's unpack these lights and get started. First up is the Niwa RGB 176. I quite like Niwa stuff. I found them on Amazon. I have a few for their tripods and stands. Um, but this is the cheapest of the bunch and it is quite cheap. It's all plastic. It uh, doesn't even come with the battery or a power adapter. So you can't run it out of the box, but it uses the standard Sony batteries. And um, the other thing that makes it really cheap is you can't really control much of it on the light itself. You have to connect your phone via Bluetooth to it. I'm not gonna, in this video, go through all of the different apps that come with the lights because that'll take too long. I might do a separate video on how they all work. But I also don't particularly like using those apps because it's just a real pain in the neck having to connect your phone to the light and then control it. I actually really like to be able to do all the controls on the light itself. So for that, this one really gets marked out. Uh, however, if you do stick the battery in and turn it on, it works quite well. You have to hold the button to get it going. All right, so we're on and then we can start turning it up. So. If you just want to plug it in and turn it on, I think by default it just does the sort of plain white, so around 5600 Kelvin or something like that. So to get going, that's fairly uh, easy, but you can't really do much with it. If you press the button, you then get different modes. So that I've, I've got that on some different color. And, uh, and then you can uh, go into like this party mode that's I had in the intro. So, you know, it works okay. Uh, it's quite bright which is one of the advantages, 100, the 176 means 176 LEDs. So that actually makes it quite bright. I'll turn that off. And um, that's, that's one of its advantages. So if you just want to stick a light on a stand, turn it on and have some fill light or whatever, that actually works quite well. And for $30, um, you can't go wrong for that. But if you want to have any other control over the, the color of the light or the brightness, oh no, you can control the brightness with the knob, but you know, the mode and the color, you want to get the color temperature right, you have to connect it to the app, which is a real pain in the neck. And sometimes it doesn't connect. And if you just want to get set up and going, that's not great for that. Next, we have the Leofas Rainbow Fresh, great name, RGB video light. Now this I really like. This is really more modeled on the aperture light. Uh, these are $64, so twice the price of that uh, newer one. Um, but what I really like about this is the fact that you can control the whole thing from the light, which is good because <laughs> it doesn't support an app. Um, so I won't go through a little bit of how you do that. So right now I'm in RGB mode and I'm hoping we can see this. I'm gonna turn the brightness down so it doesn't. Um, so in this RGB mode, you can just move through the, uh, the levels, so R, G, and B, and you can set the percentages. And I really like that because if you know the color that you want and you know how to get it with uh, certain RGB values, you can just dial it in and done. So for me, I know that a particular purple is 100% uh, R, <laughs> red, and about 20% blue. So let's go through the other modes. So you press the M button for mode. Um, now this is uh, cycling. And again, I really like this particular mode. If you just want something interesting happening, like I just have this off to the side, my face is just gonna slowly change colors as it cycles through the colors. And you can uh, set the different modes. So one, I think is faster and then two is a little slower, and then three is the slowest. And I always like the, um, the slowest mode. I think in some of my future videos, my background lights, I'm actually gonna have them cycling through as slow as possible. Just, it just keeps the background interesting, so I like that. Uh, the other mode you've got, they've got then these weird um, like lightning modes, special effects modes, and oh, I've gotta turn it off now because it's just gonna drive everyone nuts. Um, let's just leave it on 3200 Kelvin while I talk. So yeah, there's these strange modes. I don't know why anyone would use that. And if you're like, if you're making a movie or something, you want to fake lightning, you would just do it in post. I don't know why you would ever, well, I guess if you want light flashing off someone's face or something, maybe. But I, don't, I know I don't, well, <laughs> won't be using any of those modes other than the party mode for silly intros. Um, yeah, so it has things like um, 
I think there's like a police mode. They all have a police mode. So what's that lightning? Uh, let's see if I can get it. So, oh, you, yeah, so they're like, like the police mode. I, no one would ever use the police mode. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I've really been wearing my face mask. So, yeah. What's up? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll wear it. Okay, so. Yeah, so it has all those sort of special effects modes, which I don't really use. Uh, it then has this other mode to do with color temperature that kind of gives you an idea of what it would be like. So 3200 is like a, a light bulb, and then you've got uh, 4400, which is like an indoor fluorescent bulb. Uh, 5200 is the sun. 5500 is a lightning bolt, that, and it goes through like, if you don't know what different color temperatures sort of represent in the real world, I wouldn't use those, but I would use the next one, which is the actual color temperature, and you can control that from 2500 all the way up to, I think, 9500, 8500. Okay, so 2500 to 8500, which is a good range. I like warm lights, I like to use warm lights, so 2500 is really nice and warm light that you can um, add as a okay, fill that's way brighter than my key light, so that's not gonna work. But um, yeah, so overall, I really like this light. It tells you how much battery is remaining. The battery's internal, which is good and bad. The good is that you don't have to have all these extra batteries to carry around. Uh, the bad is, of course, that if it goes flat, that's it, you can't replace the battery. You have to charge it. Uh, USB-C charging, charges pretty quick. I haven't tested the actual battery life, how long it lasts, but it lasts long enough for a typical two hour video shoot, so that's not really a problem. Um, yeah, there's a good little light and very lightweight and um, yeah, I would recommend these at $65, very good. And they also come with this little pouch. I forgot to mention what um, what accessories you get with it. With that light, you get a little stand and uh, this little soft pouch, which is quite good for protecting it when you're carrying it in your camera bag or whatever. Next up is uh, the Rainbow Fresh's Big Brother, which is the Leia Fass Rainbow Sophomore RGB. Now this really is trying to take on the aperture light. Um, this pretty much has all of the features that the Aperture Light has, including it's got magnets in here, so you can stick it to anything magnetic, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it has an app to control it as well, like the Aperture Light has. So the other, the Rainbow Fresh doesn't have an app. As I mentioned, I don't really like that anyway, but uh, if you do want to control it with an app, this one has that. So if we turn it on, it's in scene mode. Again, and not much battery life, so we'll see how we go. So you've got this function button that you can move through the different uh, functions of the light. Um, and then to change uh, the mode, I think you press set. Okay, so set to move through it. So you've got RGBW, uh, scene mode, uh, CCT, which, okay, this is the one I really like because we should be able to go right down from 2500 as well. Oh, we're going up. Okay, 8500 down to 2500, yep. And, and then it has all the other features that the light, uh, the, the Rainbow Fresh has. So all the party modes. There's one particular party uh, special effects mode that I did like in this one, because I was playing around with it earlier, and it is uh, the different scenes. That's all right. So you can control the speed of the scene. It's fast, slow, normal, and slow, which is cool if you want to, um, you know, move things along quicker or slower. Um, but, oh, right. So scene, just, just preset colors, which I really like. So it's got a, a purple, um, just P. And uh, then, oh, I pressed the wrong one. Um, so then it has this rocket mode, which I don't know, I don't know what the, the working out what the icons mean in relation to what you actually get is, um, is a bit difficult. So more party modes, but there was one that I really liked. Oh, the wave, yeah, it just cycles through the colors. I, I like any light that um, just let you, just automatically cycles through all of the colors. It's, it cycles through the colors based on a particular scene. So I think this is cycling through based on C. You've got one that cycles through based on some kind of party mode. Um, right, so then you've got your yeah, R, red, um, orange, yellow, green. So if you don't know your RGB values, this is really cool because you can just go straight to the color you want. So if you want a yellow or an orange, orange is a hard one to get with RGB if you don't know it. Um, so that's really cool. And the purple is a really good one. I like to use purple lights. So uh, blue, purple. Yeah, that's cool. Really good light. So the Rainbow Sophomore isn't as cheap. These are $90, so we're getting up in price and actually getting close to the price of the uh, Aperture, actually. And another cool feature, they come with uh, this, like the Aperture does, this uh, diffuser. And they've got a little stand uh, for a little um, hot shoe mount and the charging cable, obviously. Um, 
But the main thing that sets this apart from the others is this separate silicon diffuser you can put on it, which really helps to soften that light. So that, that's a cool feature that the other ones don't come with. They just either have an onboard or built-in diffuser, but this is actually quite softening. So yeah, $90, so we're getting up there in price, but this has all the features of the uh, Aperture, as far as I can tell, for about $70 less. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and you have the option as well of the, the app, so you have full control. Um, if you're willing to spend the extra money, I don't see you can go wrong with this particular light. Uh, it's very lightweight, uh, USB-C charging again, internal battery. Yep, very good. Next up is the Ulanzi, Ulanzi VL120 RGB. So it's another uh, 120 bulb RGB light. And this also has a silicon diffuser, which is cool. It's smaller physically and lighter than the layer fast. The layer fast one is metal on the outside and with the magnets inside makes it heavier. But, um, and again, <laughs> straight into party mode. Again, this has a couple of the features I really like, slow rotating through all the colors, which keeps things interesting. And you can set your, your color temperature. So if I get to that setting, I've uh, got to get out of this scene mode thing. Oh, here we go. So you press the power button to cycle through the different modes. And now we're in CCT, so 100%. And if I go up to that one and then scroll, and that's the brightness. It's a little, once you get to know how to use it, then it's fine, but it's not immediately obvious. So 2,500 up to, I'm guessing 8,500 as well. Now this one goes up to 9,000. Okay, there you go. So 2,500 up to 9,000. I'm not sure you can tell much difference between 9,000 and 8,500 anyway, but you know, it's a slightly whiter. Um, I do like the warmer light. One of the features that the cheaper lights have on them is this color band for hue. And so you just cycle through, um, in this case, it's zero to 360. So you just kind of look and go, oh, if I want green, I'm gonna be somewhere between 160 and 120. So maybe around 180 will give me my green. And then you just set your hue to that. And I'm not really a big fan of that. I prefer to do the RGB, um, but anyway, it's there. One of the great things about this particular light is how cheap it is. It's only $40. It pretty much has all of the features of the layer fast uh, lights, including the silicon um, diffuser, but it's only $10 more than the Neewa light, which is really basic and doesn't even have any of the on-screen controls. So if I was choosing between the Neewa and the Ulanzi for $10 more, I'd be going for this one, other than for say brightness, because the other Neewa has 176 bulbs and so it's, um, is a lot brighter. We'll get into the brightness test in a second. And the last light in our test is the YPP YY 240 RGB video light. Now this is a little unfair uh, in terms of the comparison we'll do later for brightness testing in that it's a 240 RGB light. So it's obviously going to be much brighter having twice as many lights as most of them. It comes with a little stand, uh, a soft case to protect it. Again, just the built-in diffuser and doesn't come with a battery or a power adapter, so you have to have those. Okay, the first thing I like about this light is it has a dedicated power switch that is just a switch to turn it on and off. It's not a multi-mode switch that you know turns it on, you press to hold to turn it on, or press to hold to turn it off, and then press the power button to also do a function. You just flick a switch, turn it on. I know it's a simple thing, but it makes life easier. And then there's a dedicated mode button just to move through the modes, which it has the pretty standard modes. It's got those, um, hue and saturation, RGB, um, and then the party modes again, so fast and slow cycling through, and then your color temperature, so CCT, and that also has that hue uh, band that you can go through the numbers. In this case, the other one was zero to 360, this is zero to 1530, doesn't really matter, you just pick the number and then um, dial in the, the color that you want. Um, this is, I think, 2500 to uh, 8500, and it has this extra button, which I think is quite handy. It's got a fine course mode. So in course mode, when you scroll through, you're going up in 500 Kelvin increments. So if you want to sort of quickly get from 2500 up to 8500, it's really easy to do. But if you want to dial in a more specific color, then you can put it in fine mode, and then you can go in 100 Kelvin increments. So you know, that's, a, that's a thoughtful feature, I think. Again, I just put everything in 2500 anyway, but um, I like that. So this is just a really easy light to use. Once you plug the battery in, then you can quickly get to your modes. I don't think this has a app that you can connect to it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, I'll double check that in if I do a, an app comparison review. But, um, but you wouldn't need it anyway. It's just so easy to use. And 
the thing I like the most about this light is just how bright it is. You can really almost use this as a key light if you don't have many other options and it's super cheap. Yeah, $60 for this light, that's it. So, okay, it's twice the price of the Niwa, um, but I think it's worth two Niwas um, just for features and ease of use. The fact that you can control it all from the light itself and you don't have to connect the app, I think is definitely worth um, the double the price. Uh, I'm pretty, you don't get double the brightness, but you do get a lot of light for $60, a lot. Now we compare that to the price of uh, the Aperture, which I guess is what we're benchmarking everything against, at around $160. Uh, you can get two of these, which is probably about four times the amount of light for the same price as one Aperture. It's bigger, it's bulkier, it's certainly not as easy to throw in your uh, camera bag. The Aperture light comes in this cool little case that you can uh, this protects it and it also has the diffuser so it doesn't have any of that but just for pure amount of light and features on the light itself um, I think you can't go wrong and in fact this is the one that I've gone out and purchased extra of because I just think they're so good they're so bright and they've got all the features that I need okay the last thing to do is actually test how bright all of these lights are now I don't have any specialized equipment for measuring brightness I'm just going to do a poor man's test and that is to point the camera at a subject light it with each of these lights and see what the camera pushes the ISO to to get the correct amount of light. So uh, let's set up and see how bright these lights go. Okay, not the most scientific way to do a light test, but I think it worked okay. For me, the winner is the YPPYY240. You just get so much light for $60. You can almost get three of these for the price of one aperture. I just think that is totally worth it. And I will be buying more of these, particularly for the studio, because I'm not too worried about portability. So this just works well for me and you just, it's just such good value for money and all the controls are on the light, which I really like. However, if you're after maximum portability and features, I would go for the LayerFast Rainbow Sophomore because it has full app control and full on device control. And it comes with a diffuser and it's quite bright. So I would go for this one. It's got the magnets in it, which can be really handy if you just need to stick it to something nearby and because you, you don't have a stand. So that's the one to go for. But if you're on a tight budget, then you really can't go past the Elancy for $40 and it comes with the diffuser as well. So it's only $10 more than the Niwa, but has way more features. You can control everything on the light itself. It has the diffuser. So on a budget, $40, this is a great little light. You can just pop on your camera or have off to the side, however you want to set it up. And that's a good one to go for. But for me personally, I like the YPP, lots of light.